Today on Studio G, we take a look at UNLV's first ever farmer market. Also, one of the biggest movie franchise has fans excited for its conclusion. And we sit down with UNLV visiting lecturer, Ben Morse. Don't go anywhere. Studio G starts right now. Welcome to Studio G. I'm Kristen Uidoy. And I'm Nick Sedbrook. After the terrible attacks in Sri Lanka, one family is struggling with a loss. Here's Will Ripley with more. In this central Colombo neighborhood, terror turns to grief. One by one, family members carry the coffins of Anastine Napoleon, her husband, Pradap Kanagasabi, and the tiny caskets of their two daughters, seven-year-old Andrina and one-year-old Abriana. The family didn't usually go to St. Anthony's. They decided to attend a special Easter Mass, along with around a thousand other people, including the man who entered the sanctuary and blew himself up. The clock on the church tower stopped at 8.45, the time the bomb went off. An act of brutality incomprehensible to Fazal Hanifa, a family friend and a Muslim. The children, small children, who, what, what, can, what do they know? I can't understand. I, are these people humans? They are not humans, they are animals. This family, like so many others, heard about the bombings on TV. They went to the hospital, the mortuary, and finally, the church. It was there in the decimated sanctuary, they found their loved ones in pieces. They have taken around uh, 30 bodies uh, from here and still they are searching. So we don't know what is inside still. On a normal day, these coffins would be open. This is not a normal day. These pictures are the only closure they get, if you can call this closure. There's so much raw emotion here. I was chatting with one of the sisters. She was lying on the floor, she was sobbing. And she kept saying, they need to catch the people who did this. They need to find them and they need to stop them before they do this to some other family. With sorrow comes anger and questions. Why did this happen? Why this family? The answers may never come. Certainly not today. Will Ripley, CNN, Colombo, Sri Lanka. There are no words to justify what happened in Sri Lanka. For the families, our thoughts and prayers go out to them. Students may be busy with finals, but they are also preparing to go to the movie theater this weekend. Here's Lorenzo Torino with more. Final exams are right around the corner, and here at UNLV, students are not only busy preparing, but also prepping for this weekend with the release of Marvel's Avengers Endgame. I think it's super popular because it's just been leading up. It's been like however many years that the MCU's been building, and it's finally like the Endgame. And especially Infinity War, it was um, created a lot of hype because all the, you know, dusting and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's just been years of buildup, and this is the payoff, supposedly, so. The film is described as a conclusion to the 21 films that started with 2008's Iron Man. Clocking in at three hours, fans are said to be in for an emotional and fun ride that will determine the fate of the Marvel films from here on out. As long as the MCU's been going on, maybe three hours can be, like, justified, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of people might if they aren't completely invested into the story, they might tune out. Now, local movie theaters such as AMC and Regal have said that most of their tickets are sold out in regards to IMAX, 3D, and Dolby. However, there 
Normal ticket sales are still available, but they are going very quickly. If you're looking to buy tickets, please go to your local movie theater or purchase them online at Fandango.com. I'm Lorenzo Torino with Studio G. Wow, the excitement is real. Between this game and Game of Thrones, it's going to be an emotional weekend. Be sure to get your tickets before they sell out. Coming up, we take a look at UNLV's first farmer's market. And later, I sit down with ben, UNLV's Ben Morse. If you'd like to see your name in the credits, you can join us. The Scramble runs on PBS Channel 10 and YouTube. As a student-run show, anyone can join us. You can be a reporter with the opportunity to be paid. Learn skills behind the scene and pitch your own story ideas. Add us to your resume by contacting UNLV manager Jennifer Rehm in the Greenspun building or email contact me, Katie Streit, with any questions or concerns at strieik1 at unlv.nevada.edu. Free food? It almost sounds way too good to be true. It was a reality on campus yesterday though. Meredith Hall has the story. Hi, what would you like? We have juice, apples, oranges, and sweet potatoes. UNLV students lined up in the Student Union Courtyard on Tuesday for UNLV Food Pantry's first ever farmer's market, where students could fill up their canvas bags with fresh produce like apples, oranges, and sweet potatoes. The best part is, it was all free of charge. The farmer's market was put on by UNLV's Food Pantry, an internal assistance program dedicated to making sure students, faculty, and staff get the help that they need. So we're out here just giving away free produce to promote UNLV Food Pantry. Tanner Ellingson is the coordinator for the Food Pantry. Could you tell me about UNLV Food Pantry? I mean, I'm a UNLV, I've been going here for five years, I've never that's, heard That's the problem right there, yeah. So the, the Food Pantry is a service we have here on campus for any UNLV student, faculty, or staff. So all you have to do is come over to an open pantry, show us your Rebel card, and you can essentially get some food. I mean, we're there to, to service anybody that needs it, and we don't really place restrictions on it. This farmer's market is just the beginning of big plans for the pantry. So this being the first one, we want to start incorporating some fresh produce into the pantry. Um, this, this, hopefully this fall we're going to be sort of expanding our size and be able to get some refrigeration in there. So that will mean we'll be able to incorporate produce into the pantry itself and not have farmer's markets. But we'll still st keep doing these. Might not be at the student union, but we'll do them around campus, sort of pop up here and there to get things going. And just as the farmer's market showed, the food pantry is here to help anyone on campus who needs it. I just think that you know the students need to know about us and anybody, doesn't matter who you are, if you're a faculty, student, staff, undergrad, graduate, you know, PhD, you can use our service. So come on over there, you can take as little as you want, as much as you want, it doesn't really matter. We're there to help you. Meredith Hall, Studio G. For more information on the UNLV Food Pantry and to find out how you can get assistance, visit unlv.edu slash ahs slash food dash pantry. You can also find out how you can get involved with the food pantry by emailing them. The email is also listed on their website. When we come back, Nick Sedbrook sits down with UNLV's Ben Morse. KUNV, I feel how I feel about it. It's great. I love it a lot. There's a lot amount of freedom. You can really do basically whatever you want. Very nice facility. Uh, very clean. We have editing booths, st studios for uh, students to practice our craft and to learn more. And uh, KUNV definitely gives us um, insight into what we'll be doing when we get our careers when, once we graduate. They give us free will and free creativity. I can gain experience 
to further my career in the radio broadcasting, board operating, to music directing, to even being on air, which is my main goal to do in life. So I could use all that knowledge to put towards my career in radio broadcasting. You will learn so much here at KUMB, and we have a lot to offer. Welcome back to Studio G. I'm here with UNLV's lecturer, Ben Morse. Hi, how are you doing? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Cool. Happy to be here. Yeah. We're happy to have you. I'm right around the corner, so it was an easy trip, you know? Yeah. Not, a, not a long commute. You're going to have to go through Maryland Parkway. <sighs> That's good. Yeah, I'll have to do that later today. Um, so you used to work at Marvel? I did. Cool. What was that like? <sighs> I'm on to. When I was in fifth grade, I wrote a letter to myself saying, uh, Two things. One day you will be in the NBA, because I liked to play basketball when I was a kid, or my dad liked me to play basketball when I was a kid. <laughs> and then I also said, you will work at Marvel Comics. Like, this was an assignment for class. We all had to say, like, what we were going to be doing when we grew up. Mm -hmm. um, didn't even make it to high school with basketball, but I did get to work at Marvel, which was literally my dream job when I was a kid. Uh, every day was incredible. Um, I got to meet so many cool people from actors to directors to celebrities who would come in but honestly the coolest thing for me was if like a writer or artist who worked on something when i was a kid in the 90s came in that's when i would like lose it and i would just feel like i could not talk yeah you're like getting to like the comics you read growing up you're like actually getting to meet these people that yeah produce that the people who made the stuff that made me want to do what i eventually end up doing for a living so to me those were my uh, those are my heroes but yeah, I got to do a lot of cool stuff at Marvel. Oh, cool. That is awesome. Um, so what did you do exactly at Marvel? So I started out um, as an assistant editor on the website on marvel.com. So I was basically responsible for writing and editing articles and helping to promote the comics um, and eventually the movies, TV shows, everything else. Mm -hmm. By the time I left, I was editorial director of digital media which essentially meant anything that Marvel touched as far as digital, whether it was a video going on YouTube, a podcast going out, uh, some sort of social campaign, I had to approve it and I had to look over it at some point. Okay, yeah. cool. So um, so you spent like 10 years at Marvel, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there for a decade. Okay, what um, influenced the change from Marvel to working here at UNLV? So it was a uh, change in my personal life. Uh, my wife and I, or mostly her, had a baby. <laughs> um, and uh, we wanted to be closer to family to raise her. And Marvel's in New York. I'm from Boston. She's from Las Vegas. So it was uh, basically we wanted to move to either Boston or Las Vegas. Um, it was kind of a good timing thing because having been there for 10 years, I still loved my job, but I'd gotten to do everything I wanted to do. So there was no like, ah, oh, I'm really gonna regret this if I leave. So we ultimately decided we wanted to move to Vegas. Uh, the opportunity came up to teach here and uh, do some other stuff here at UNLV. And it was just a natural fit. It was nothing I had ever thought of doing previously. Um, but once I got here, I just, I loved it. And the community's really welcomed me in and it's been really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I've never had you as a teacher, but I hear buzz about you all the time, like the guy from Marvel. Okay, yeah, the guy. <laughs> it's still the guy from Marvel now, which, I mean, it's only been a year and a half, so I think that's going to be for a while. But you know what? Honestly, if I'm here 30 years and I'm still the guy from Marvel, I don't mind. That's that's fine. That's, that's like a great way to be. That's like basically a superhero. You're like the Essentially. guy from Marvel. Yeah, no, that's true. My cape's in the office. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. I want to try that on. Sometime. Yeah, right. <laughs> Stop by anytime. Um, okay, so Avengers Endgame is yeah. coming out. What um, are your expectations for it? So kind of the cool thing about uh, Avengers Infinity War from last year and Avengers Endgame from this year is these are the first two movies that I didn't work on. Um, literally, like I said, I started in 2007. Iron Man came out, the first Iron Man came out in 2008. Mm -hmm. So I was working to do promotion on Iron Man. And then every movie that came out after that, I was working to do promotion on that. So that was cool because I got to be part of it. I got to interview the actors. I got to, you know, be integrated into the movies. The bad part was I always knew it was going to happen because yeah. I got to like read scripts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, the last one I worked there before I left in uh, 2017 was Black Panther. And then Avengers Infinity War was a complete surprise to me. So when all that stuff happened in Avengers Infinity War, I was as shocked as anybody else. Um, and that was very shocking. My expectations for Endgame is that it's going to be incredible, amazing, 
fantastic. Um, <laughs> I, all the rest. All the rest. Just uh, the thing is, man, with, with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, again, going back to 2008, the buzz around Marvel in 2008 was we weren't sure how Iron Man was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, I think everyone looks back now and thinks that it was, it was just like a, a shared success and everyone was knew it was going to be a blockbuster. But put yourself in our shoes at the time. Iron Man was not a well-known character. Robert Downey Jr. was not a proven commodity. So we didn't know what was going to happen. But Kevin Feige, who ran Marvel Studios, always saw this. Like this, is, this was his vision to get to where they are now with Endgame. So the cool thing for me when you ask about expectations is... I'm getting to see a story that was conceived 10 years ago and see it completely wrap up, which is awesome. Yeah, so have you already bought your tickets? So my brother-in-law, I promised I'd wait for him and he's gonna be out of town this weekend. So I'm not gonna get to see it opening weekend, which means I have to spend a week of trying to get students not to spoil it for me, which is a nightmare. Yeah, and uh, you're big on Twitter, so like. Oh dude, <laughs> I'll probably, yeah, you won't see me Just on. Log you out. won't see me on Twitter for a week, yeah. <laughs> cool, well thank you so much for joining us My today. pleasure, yeah. thanks. All right, um, after the break, Vanessa McConnell gives us an update on the weather. Cool. Name of my show. Sorry, I know there's a bunch of stuff. I'm yeah. sorry, I know there's a no, bunch of stuff. With Americana, folk, and bluegrass music. I chose bluegrass music and folkways with country and Americana because of the joy I feel in my heart. I want to keep the music going and share it with others and carry it on for decades to come. My name is Miss Missy. My show is Folkways. You can listen every Sunday morning from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on the rebelhd2.com. I used to DJ at KUMV back in 1989 through 92 when the Rebels took the championship. KUMV is a good family. Uh, it's fun. The shows that are on it are creative. You can come up with your own show. It's really eclectic and um, creative and interesting. That's what I like about it. We are a platform that opens doors for everybody. We don't limit from what I've seen so far. There's no limit to what we can't do here. I love their open door policy. Everyone is there to help you out. If there's something that you don't quite understand or remember, you can come in and ask. They'll show you how to do what needs to be done to make your radio show smooth. So expand your mind, expand your knowledge base, and get involved. It's a lot of fun. It's been a pretty interesting week for weather. Am I right, Vanessa? Absolutely, absolutely. So I'll just take you right into it. Today, the high is gonna be 91, low of 70, but here, Right now, the temperature is 82, so brace yourself. It's gonna get a little hot a little later, but. So this week, how about this week? Today we have a high of 91, as we said. It's sunny, gonna be sunny tomorrow, 95. Them temperatures are gonna kinda take it up a little throughout the weekend, Friday at 96, Saturday 94. Sunday 92. So let's go down to the whole breakdown of the whole entire city. At Centennial, we have a steady temperature of 78, as well as Summerlin, Southern Highlands at an 81. And as you see, as we go towards the middle of the valley, temperature starts to rise a little more with North Las Vegas at 82, Las Vegas 82 as well, and Green Valley holding it down at 81. But Nellis is reaching 84, so we know that's the hottest part of the valley. So. Let's see how the rest of the week continues. This morning, as we said, we had a temperature of 82, visibility at 10 miles an hour, with wind speeds at about five miles an hour, humidity at 17%. Tonight, as we go into the evening hours, um, we have a high temperature of 70 degrees, which is, should be a very good night for everybody with calm winds. It's gonna be a clear night, humili humidity about 17%. Now, I don't know if you guys knew, but there were 640 words that was added to the dictionary. So I've picked my personal favorite words, Stan. Now, if you are that super fan, you are a Stan. Garbage time. That blowout game, garbage time. Peak is when you're at the top of your, your peak of your career. And Goldilocks, you're neither hot nor cold. And my favorite, purple. 
that's when you're in between. You're not a Democrat and you're not a Republican. So we'll take it back to the news desk and see about what else is going on in Studio G. <laughs> when we come back, we will take a look at we will take a look at an LGBT volleyball group and a look at students' thoughts on Times Top 100's influencers. Don't go anywhere. The number one thing I like about KUNV is it enables an individual to express their passion and grow and share that passion with others. It's a wonderful gift that's shared by KUNV with students and community members alike. I love them because they gave me this opportunity and I love the way they are representing the community and giving people from the community a chance to come in and, you know, do whatever they got to do with their music. I love KUV, I love being here and I love the people that I'm working with and uh, finally getting my chance to finally work in radio, which I've been wanting to do since I was a kid. So I'm very happy here. You'll really have the chance to grow and, and learn about radio from very good DJs and from, from management. We are here and you can be here too. KUNV is a great place to be. Personally, I love KUNV. It is my sanctuary for creativity. I be, I'm given an opportunity to come in and use the resources that we have here to create the shows and the broadcasts that we do. It is my favorite creative space to be in. I feel like the station gives students a platform to actually play music and actually a chance to get their hands in the radio industry without having to spend that money. I like KMV. Um, it's a community station. Uh, they opened up the doors to myself, uh, also to other people who, who have a dream of, of being in radio or, or whatever the case may be. You have that energy from the city coming back to you while you're on a live broadcast. There's nothing like that feeling. They have producing um, workshops. I got, I learned how to actually do play-by-plays for sports events. KNOV has done a lot for me as a student. If you want to do a talk show, a specialty show, music, it doesn't matter. There's a place for you to be able to come and give your voice to our community. Need to escape and have some fun? This LGBT volleyball group is creating a sense of community and having a blast while doing it. Sunset Park is an oasis in the desert landscape. It's an amazing place for people to hang out and meet. That's why this LGBT group decided it's the perfect spot for a volleyball social. While they usually meet every Saturday, they sometimes get together throughout the week to blow off some steam and enjoy the warm weather. I caught up with them on Monday to see what the group is all about. A decent amount turned out for this weekday hangout. The group welcomes all skill levels. You'll find music and happy faces if you stop by. Johnny Espinosa, the creator of the group, says it has done a lot for him and the community. I, as an introvert, I needed something like this. I, you know, I was 19, 20, 21, and I was, I, all I thought about was going to the clubs because that, that was my only, my only venue that I could uh, really explore my community and then I started this in 2011 because of that and it's just it's been such a great thing to have where we can unify. While it's a group created by LGBT people anyone is welcome to stop by. It's a safe space aside from the friendly trash. Tracy Scott says that's what he loves about the group. So what's so good about the group is it's actually a new group that was came, came out a long time ago. A lot of people didn't know about it. Um, so this group actually has built a lot of um, bonds, relations between everybody. And the importance of it is because we want everyone to grow. We enjoy everybody. We want to see new people, new faces, different backgrounds. The volleyball group has changed a lot in me. It has made me personally understand that there's different backgrounds, different people, different bonds, different connections. You never know who you're going to meet in life, and that's honestly the motto I live by at this point with this. Because we learn, we meet new people every day. We come out and play. We always invite new people. It gives us a chance to bond with each other. Uh, fortunately, in Las Vegas, there's not a lot. If you're looking for a sense of community or just love to play volleyball, stop by Sunset Park at 8 p.m. on Saturdays and look for the equality and rainbow flags. The group is open to anyone. Make sure to check out LGBT Volleyball and Barbecue Social on Facebook if you want to see what it's all about. Time recently released its top 100 most influential list. Arturo Sanchez has more. Time released its annual 100 Most Influential People list with the likes of influential actors like Sandra Oh and Dwayne The Rock Johnson, 
musical icons like Taylor Swift, and political leaders like Nancy Pelosi. We asked UNLV students if they had one person who they thought should make the list in the future and why. I would definitely choose rapper late uh, rapper Nipsey Hussle because I'm from uh, South Central LA. I'm actually really, I live really close to Crenshaw District, and the things he's done for the community is amazing. To be a gang member, turn entrepreneur, turn businessman from our hood that's unheard of. So he'll definitely be long on there. And I second that. I just love how he's not one of those, oh, I'm just going to donate, I'm going to do this and write a check. I like how he's actually in the community doing things and building up for the community. And it's not just, um, just like for thoughts or after thoughts. He's actually doing stuff and helping them. Yeah, yeah, he's helping them and doing stuff that they loved for the community, by the community. I just love that aspect of everything. Lizzo, for example, uh, because she definitely exudes body positivity and it's like any shape or form and especially body confidence as well. Like her confidence in anything that she does makes me feel confident as a woman and as an individual. And you know, it just she makes me want to just go out there and do whatever I can and want as a person. So yeah, I definitely think she should be there. Surprisingly, one student named one leader who made this year's icon list. I think Michelle Obama because um, women rights. Um, I also like the fact that she pushes women to do better in the corporate world. The magazine chooses celebrities, guest contributors, and overall influential people Seven. to write about the 100 who made that list. For Studio G, I'm Arturo Sanchez. There's so many amazing people. Do you have anyone on the list? Uh, I really like how that one girl said Lizzo. Um, I don't oh, know if I you like know Lizzo. her. Yeah, she's always like playing the flute right. and like twerking. She's really on talented. Stage. She was yeah. just on Ellen, Jimmy Kimmel. She's really talented. Yeah, she's. Been, I'm so glad that she's finally getting like the recognition yeah. and blowing up. What about right. you? Do you? Speaking of Ellen, I love Ellen. Oh yeah. My favorite celebrities are Ellen, Miley Cyrus. I don't know. I I love Ellen. <laughs> I love that the journey that Miley's been on. Like she like she's someone you can really identify with. I feel right, and she kind of went through that little crazy stage, you know? We've that, all been there. Right, exactly. <laughs> but she's good. You know, I love her love for animals. That's my favorite thing about her. But mm -hmm. What about the Marvel movies? Are you going to go see it this weekend? You know, uh, my friend really wants to go to this 315 showing, mm. and it's at 3.15 a.m. So. Oh, that's, that makes <laughs> so it more exciting, though. 6 a.m. That, that's more exciting. You're that's right. More, You're right. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's all the news we have for you today. Thanks for turning into Studio G. See you tomorrow. Bye.